Welcome to Your Research Business Daily Report, sponsored today and all this week by Socratic Technologies, whose proprietary tools and methodologies tackle marketing complexities so that you can make confident business decisions. There are a couple of interesting new research facilities in the news. There's a move afoot to make North Carolina the national hub for data-intensive business and data science research and education. Spearheaded by a consortium of academic data researchers from the best-known universities in the area like University of North Carolina, NC State, and Duke, as well as businesses and the government, and that includes Cisco, GE, IBM, and SAS, this National Consortium for Data Science, or NCDS, is supposed to develop a national strategy that ensures U.S. data leadership. There's going to be an NCDS Leadership Summit next week in Chapel Hill. North of our border, Canada has its first social media research lab. It's in Halifax, Nova Scotia at Dalhousie University. This world-class facility is supposed to help businesses, government, and not-for-profits understand the context of online social interactions. Next, with all the concentration on new research opportunities in the BRIC countries and other less developed geographies, it's very easy to forget how different doing research business in the U.S. is here versus, for instance, let's say in Europe. Toluna's new managing director for North America, Mark Simon, has just recently settled in the United States and he spoke with us about sharp differences he immediately sees between the United States and, for him, more familiar and differentiated European markets. Simon underscored that this, like all other industry, is a people business and very local. But my, my early feelings are I mean, just, just pure logistics. I mean, the U.S. being North America being a huge territory, U.S. being a very large country, the business is very decentralized in, in North America. So I can work with one research firm that might have six or seven offices. Um, the chances of that happen in the UK or in any country in Europe are virtually zero. There'll be probably one, maybe two offices. So actually getting around and physically meeting people uh, in, in Europe is seen is probably more important. In relationships, particularly in the UK, it's, they're much more highly prized than I think maybe they are in the, the US. Or actually you need to provide evidence of your um, competitive superior, superiority, uh, you can work through phone calls, WebExes and so forth. That doesn't really happen so much in the UK and in mainland Europe as it does in North America. And I think that's a key difference. Mm. Uh, some territories will be very different in the way that they um, do business. In Germany, for example, a very, very evidence-based thought leadership approach. So if you can have academic affiliations or you have peer-reviewed products or services, that sort of thing will really help you rather than being a great relationship guy. In the UK, France, Italy and so forth, Spain, um, relationships are very, very highly prized. Um, it's probably you know, not a, a very controversial thing to say that uh, most of Americans are you know, predominantly focused on their own country, um, uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it's a huge country with... with is that less so in Europe? I think, yeah, yes. I mean... The truth is that just the size of the territories mean that you, if, you, if you work in the Netherlands, you have to have an international aspect. It, you can't. You know, mm -hmm. It's very difficult to keep a, to sustain a large international business purely from, say, Dutch domestic work. So that's why you have a lot of key hubs take, um, are situated in the Netherlands, in Belgium, in Singapore and Hong Kong, which themselves are pretty small markets, but have great... Um, flows of people through them, different cultures, different people, and also are very adept at working in different different cultures quite easily. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's but something. But if you're a researcher in Great Britain, yeah, um, are you more centric towards the British and and what's going on research-wise in Britain than you are in the rest of Europe? Yeah, I think it's fair to say we are um, Brits as a, as a nation are not quite as international as they would like to have you believe. Um, I'd say the same goes for Australians as well, like a very, self, um, very um, almost self-contained ecosystem, Australia and the UK. They won't always look outwards very much. What about in France and Germany, where, at least to me, there's a great deal of provincialism? Yeah, Germany is a very decentralized nation. You have not one dominant city, and Germany is almost a collection of states, not unlike the US. There are... Uh, 
and show my ignorance here, there are 10 or 12 key states which have key cities and the market research industry is very decentralized um, in, that, in that territory. Uh, they will be state or country focused. The French, and I can say this because I have a French wife, I've lived in France and I work for what was originally a French company, uh, it can be pretty inward looking. Um, they're very proud of their culture. They are. Um, they take a certain amount of pride in being being different, uh, and they quite like um, not following the rules that have been laid down on a global level. You know, you know, I'm not, you know my boss is French. If we're going to kill me for that, the, the key thing, and I'd say this goes for doing business anywhere in the world, is be local. Now, I don't mean that you have to necessarily have a, a staff purely made up of locals because that's not always feasible, but there is. There is no value in superimposing an imprint of something that's worked in the US or the UK um, in, a cult, in a different country and expect it to work. If it does, it'll be pure chance. And uh, I know that from our own experience, if you, if you do that in Australia or you do that in, in Asia as well as in Europe, you're going to really give yourself a lot of problems. So the idea is to be um, very optimized towards the local market, understand what it is that culturally makes that particular market unique. There will be a lot of commonalities, but make sure you, you, you understand that and you apply your global scale of your business, but on a micro level. That's your Research Business Daily Report, sponsored by Socratic Technologies, whose proprietary tools and methodologies tackle marketing complexities so that you can make confident business decisions. Once again, I want to encourage you to check out Socratic's link underneath this video. Have a great research day, a good rest of your research week, enjoy your weekend, and please join us again here on Monday.